Any integer value is represented by some binary pattern of ones and zeros. But in the next few lecture segments, we'll look into C operators that manipulate the binary bits within an integer directly. For such operators, the content of an integer variable is more interesting for the sake of its bit pattern than of its overall numerical value. It's useful to have a way to rapidly determine the numerical value that corresponds to some bit pattern, and decimal is not a good way to do that. This segment covers two good ways to do it, hexadecimal and octal notation. And again, this may be review for some, but at least be sure you get the conceptual depth that goes with the overall description here. First of all, let's talk a little bit about base conversions. We're going to look shortly at conversions between three different numerical bases, bases 2, 8, and 16. But before we do it, it's useful to consider something that we instinctively do with base 10 numbers that relates strongly to how we'll do those other base conversions. While we think we count in base 10, in a certain sense, we actually think in base 1000. To see what I mean, try reading aloud this number here in the uh, slide. Now, if you read it aloud, it's likely that what you said was 123,456,789. We even add commas, or periods in some countries, to separate the digits into groups of three. Importantly, you didn't announce each place value when you said the number, or even when you think about it. No one says or thinks four hundred thousands, five ten thousands. Instead, we break the number at what we might call benchmark place values, such as the thousands place, and we think of the digits to the left of each benchmark place value relative to that place value. So we see the 4 and the 5 in our sample value as being in the 100s and 10s place relative to 1,000, and the digits 456 collectively tell us how many thousands we have. If you think about it, we're actually describing our decimal number in base 1,000. What would be the place values in base 1,000? Well, they'd be powers of 1,000. We'd have a 1's place, of course, and then a 1,000's place, a million's place, etc. And these are exactly the benchmark place values that we use to break up a decimal number. Indeed, we have terms in English and in most languages for those benchmark place values. Thousand, million, billion, trillion, and not for most other place values. What this shows is that you can convert between certain bases by choosing benchmark place values in the smaller base and grouping digits around those place values to arrive at the larger base. For this to work, the larger base has to be some power of the smaller one. A thousand is ten to the third power, for instance, and we convert from base ten to base one thousand by grouping digits by threes. As long as the larger base is some integer power of the smaller one, the system will work. If we chose to, we might have grouped decimal digits by fours, made up words for each four powers of ten, and counted in base ten thousand. Indeed, one Chinese numbering system does exactly this. So, how does this apply to binary values? Well, consider the 9-bit binary value 101011110, right down here. Let's write it with commas grouping every three bits, just like we do for decimal values. And you can see the commas there. So, question one, what are the place values of the bits immediately to the left of those two commas? And to which higher base do those place values correspond? And it's pretty much written in the diagram, so the answer is fairly direct. 64 and 8, and then the ones place, of course. They're the place values above the ones place in a base 8 number. So we can view this 9-bit binary number as a sort of three-digit base 8 or octal number in a fashion very much like what we did for base 10 and base 100. For instance, bit 4 here could be viewed as the 16's place, or we can call it the 2's place relative to the 8's place, and so on. The diagram here shows the full interpretation. And we can use a single digit for each grouping, by the way, something we can't do in the base 1000 case, because the highest value we can count with three bits is just 111 or 7. So our sample binary value, right here, translates to a base 8 value, thus 5 64s, 3 8s, 
three eights and six ones. Yep, just to be sure you get the idea then of what we're doing, translate the much larger binary value I just wrote here into octal, base eight. Coming back from a pause, a breakup of the number into uh, three bit groups like that, and the top group is just two bits, and uh, the translated octal number that you should have from that is thus. Okay, so why do we care about this? Well, as discussed earlier, sometimes you want to put a particular pattern of bits into an integer. The numerical value is incidental, but you have to assign some number into an int in order to get the bit pattern. Assigning an octal number is more convenient than assigning a decimal because once you get the hang of it, it's very easy to translate a desired bit pattern into an octal value and vice versa. Most programming languages, including C, let you express a constant in octal for this reason. In C, you do so by preceding the constant with a leading zero, as on line four of our sample program, where we assign the octal value that we just computed, in fact, into the variable i. Now, I introduced octal first because of its natural connection with the three-digit groupings in base 10. But octal has two problems as a base. First, it compresses only three bits into each octal digit. And second, integers come in sizes of 8, 16, 32, and perhaps 64 bits. None of those sizes are divisible by three, so the most significant octal digit is always encoding only one or two bits, as in our case here, which is somewhat inelegant. What would be better, and what is more common these days, is to use four-bit groups, breaking the binary number up a little differently, thus. And then question three here. What are the place values of the bits immediately to the left of the commas, at least the lower ones, and what number base do those place values correspond to? Coming back from a pause here. Going right to left, this guy here is the 16's place. That one is the 256's. Here's the 4096's place, the 65536's place, etc. These are powers of 16, and they correspond to base 16 place values. So we can also convert to base 16, or hexadecimal, by reading each 4-bit group as a base 16 number. The diagram down here shows how we're interpreting the bits. Bits uh, 4 through 7, for instance, are interpreted relative to the 16's place. And they show how many 1's, 2's, 4's, and 8's of 16's there are. In the diagram example, right here, that's uh, 8 plus 4 is 12 16's for this little number here. Grouping by 4 bits crams more bits into each integer in the larger base, and 4 divides evenly into each or into every integer bit size that's in common use. And this is good. What is bad, however, is that we have to count up to 15, the highest possible value that goes in one place in hexadecimal, using single symbols. We only had to count up to 7 per place value in octal. The decimal system that we're used to only supplies digits up to 9, so the universal convention is to use the letters A through F for the values 10 through 15. Thus, hexadecimal values are combinations of the standard digits and these added digits. So the binary value from the diagram here, for example, translates to uh, A, since that's a 10 there, C for 12, and uh, 5 in base 16. To convert 4-bit groups to hexadecimal, you need to memorize all 16 4-bit patterns and their corresponding hexadecimal digit. This is rather more tedious than the 8 3-bit patterns of octal, especially since it is our instinct not to think of values higher than 9 as single symbols. The table in the diagram here, and repeated in the transcript, will help. Consider all of those 16-bit patterns to be vocabulary. Memorize them. And for question four, translate these binary values to hexadecimal. Hmm, coming back from a 
perhaps lengthy pause there. What you should have gotten, breaking these up by groups. is um, three a nine b e c seven and uh, d for the first one and the second one slightly amusing is d e a d b e e and f by the way, the uh, second one is not just a joke. Uh, in some programs, it's deliberately copied into memory blocks as invalid initial data, and because dead beef stands out in a hexadecimal dump of memory when you're debugging. As with octal, C lets you write an integer constant in hexadecimal. You do this by preceding it with OX, as we do here on uh, line 5 of the sample code, which assigns into J the first value that we just translated into hexadecimal. In modern code, prefer hexadecimal. Octal is more common in code from the 1970s, and you'll find it still crops up now and then, especially in systems designed at that time, e.g. in the uh, representation of file permissions in Unix, for example. C provides format specifier percent %o for printing in octal, and percent capital %x or lowercase x for uh, printing hexadecimal. The uh, uppercase prints the a through f in uppercase form and the lowercase prints them in lowercase form. These also work, by the way, with scanf if you want to enter integers in octal or hexadecimal. And these format specifiers are illustrated, of course, here on lines 8 and 9, where we print i and j in three different ways. They're the same value each time. It's just in different bases. And a further illustration, complete with field widths and zero padding, is down here on line 13. Recall from your earlier research on printf formats what a field with a leading zero does, by the way. The loop that drives line 13 computes a series of integer values, each with a single one bit, since each value the loop assigns into us is a power of two. Such one bit patterns are called masks, and masks will be useful in our upcoming discussions, and you should know the hexadecimal and octal representations of the one bit masks, which are output down on lines 21 through 36 here, as you can see. Be sure you understand why they each represent a bit pattern having only a single one bit. And then finally, a bit of external research. Question 5. In what library applications for C, or other languages really, might base 65536 be used? And a related though it doesn't sound like it, question, what does GMP stand for in the context of C? Coming back from a pause there. In arbitrary precision number libraries, we might use base 65536, and GMP is one example. Some computations require values of sizes larger than C or other languages can supply. In such cases, one uses an arbitrary precision numerical library that stores large values in arrays and provides functions to do all common math operations on them. One common design, for instance, uses an array of ordinary ints to store a much larger int, holding 16 bits of the larger int per array element. So, for instance, a 1,024-bit integer would occupy an array of 1,024 divided by 16 is 64 normal integer elements. This is very much like the bit grouping we've just examined, but by 16-bit groups, not 3-bit or 4-bit. So it is effectively a base 65-536 system. 